Welcome back to another Tips and Tricks Thursday. My name is Derek, and today I'm gonna to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to replace the back glass on an Apple Watch. So let's get into the video. Now replacing the back glass is fairly tedious and time consuming but it's also not that complicated. On basically every Apple Watch, it requires almost a full teardown. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to do that. Let's get started. Got this Apple Watch Series 7, 45 millimeter. It clearly has some damage to the back. I've already removed the screen. And if you're interested in learning how to take off the screen, check out one of my last videos where I show how to replace the glass only. On this particular model, there's only one screwdriver we're gonna need, which is our tri-wing screwdriver. And basically each one of the screws inside is different, so we do need to keep track of them. To get started, I'm going to take a pry tool and I'm going to wedge it down in between the battery and the frame. And then using some 99% isopropyl alcohol, we will let the adhesive out of the battery loosen up. And with very light pressure, we're going to start to pry the battery up. It may take some time and you may need to add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol, but after a minute or so, it'll pop up. And the reason I'm taking so long to do it is because I don't want the bottom of the battery to wrinkle, which will potentially help it start to swell sooner because it'll now have a little bit more room to grow. Eventually you'll feel it kind of give up a little bit. And I'm gonna put a little bit more alcohol on the last piece of adhesive that's holding it down. And here we'll just carefully pop it up like so. We'll take our screwdriver and we'll remove the screw along with the bracket that's holding the battery down and we will disconnect the battery. Now you can see I did get a little wrinkle and if you start on the where the wrinkle ends and you take your nail you can actually completely remove the wrinkle flattening out the bottom. That way we leave the adhesive intact as well so we can reuse it. From here, we're gonna remove the Taptic engine, keeping the screws in order. That one, this other gold one, we've got one here above the crown. We'll fold out this, we'll fold out that flex cable, gently lift out the Taptic engine, and we'll disconnect the connector. Now we can disconnect this antenna with its coax connector, and we'll set it aside with its screw. Now we'll disconnect the crown and power button flex cable. We can disconnect the speaker, We'll peel up the sticker under that one and disconnect. And we'll disconnect this antenna and we'll set it aside with its screw as well. Now we have three screws and a bracket that we'll take out here at the top. And then we can remove the bracket. And then we've got three screws that are kind of hidden under the sticker. And I'm just going to kind of poke into the sticker and loosen the screws. And I'm just going to leave the screws kind of hidden in the sticker, except when they <laughs> come out. And then we can take out that bracket. All right, now we've got three screws holding down the speaker unit. One here at the top, two on the bottom side. Then we'll take our tweezers and we'll gently pry on the speaker and get it to pop out. Looks like we've got glass falling out already. Now we have some flex cables and screws and things like that that are holding onto the frame, but nothing's holding onto the motherboard. So if we are careful, we can lift the board and we'll slide it out from under those flex cables, gently, gently, and then it'll come out just like this. We'll fold the flex cables around it, and we can go to disconnect the motherboard flex to the wireless charging unit on the back, just like that. Now it is technically possible to transfer over this unit to a new back glass. It's really tricky though, because of the adhesive that holds this down, and there are several contact points that need a conductive adhesive to re-stick them to the glass surface for static and for some of the sensory of the glass. So replacing it with a new back is the most effective way with it pre-installed. From here, it's pretty straightforward. You can actually see that that one's coming out, which this ring is also replaceable by itself. Very tricky though to do because of the glue that's being used. And in this case, we do have cracks on this surface, so I can't just replace the mid circle there. So I'm gonna push with my thumb on the back and you can probably start to see it lift if it's not budging at all. Then I'm gonna flood the interior border with isopropyl alcohol. You can do the external border as well. It'll help kind of break up the gasket bond that's there. 
And now when we push, it really wants to start to separate. Now you gotta be careful as you lift because these side buttons here have two springs on each side that can go and disappear if they go flinging somewhere. All right, and here it comes. Now, if you can tell, there's a gasket that remained on this side. Sometimes it sticks and stays on the frame. You wanna make sure that you either have a new gasket or that the new back glass has a gasket as well. Mine came with the buttons and the, and the springs, the four springs. As you can see down here, got these four springs. And now I have some backups just in case they go flying. We'll set that aside. And now is a good opportunity for some cleaning. I'm gonna take some acetone here and a Q-tip. And this is never, well, hopefully never gonna see the light of day, this section here. So I'm gonna clean it. As long as we put the back glass on, this can't be cleaned, obviously. And I'm sure that this is, who knows what that is, orange something or other, maybe makeup, dead skin, who knows. For the next step, you might get confused which way this goes. It can only go two different ways. If you are confused, then what you can do is you can just kind of visualize this goes in here, which means the flex cable is on the bottom side, which means this needs to be spun around so that it can connect. Now you know it needs to go in like this. So as you can see, I have a gasket on here ready to go. I do need to carefully place each one of these springs into those little slots so that these buttons will actually work. This is more tedious than it looks. Just like that, nudge it into place, and we'll do the last one. There we go. And the tricky part is keeping these straight up and down without them kind of bending to the side. The only thing that really holds this whole thing down is the four corner screws that were on the corner of the two brackets. So now that everything's lined up, and I know the side that things need to be on. I'll carefully install this. And one of the sides, the springs folded over. So I'm going to realign them. There's one, there's two. And I'll carefully close that up, making sure the springs stay where they need to be, just like that. Now the trick is to hold this sturdy so the back doesn't come off at all, because if it comes off, the springs might just fold over and then the buttons won't work properly. So we'll take our motherboard and while keeping pressure on the back glass, we'll go down inside and we'll connect to the connector. Now we'll angle the motherboard so I can get under the flex cables and then we'll gently get it down inside, making sure that all of the flexes stay on top. And then the motherboard will kind of sit back down inside. You just need to be really careful to not damage the flexes as you try to go under it. And then we'll make sure that's nice and installed. Now we can take the bracket, just stick it down inside, tighten the screw, and then we'll put back the corner screws that'll really cinch down the back glass on this side. And then we'll take the top bracket and we'll do the same thing. We'll line it up, take the screws and screw them on down nice and tight. And we can flip it over and take a look at the back and then we'll check the buttons. Make sure they have a nice spring back, just like that and that there's no gaps and it's sitting nice and flush like this. All right, so for the next step, we're going to slide in the speaker. You kind of have to angle the bottom in first so they can get up over the board and all the connectors and stuff. And then you can push down and slide in the top. Make sure you're not damaging the flex cable. And then it'll just push on in to the back. And then we can put in the three screws that hold it down, just like that. Now we'll get out this flex. It's a little awkward to connect but I find it easiest to do after the speaker's installed so that the speaker doesn't want to clip it. We'll line it on up and then we'll click it on down and then we connect the speaker and we can connect the crown and power button. And if you ever need to replace the crown or the power button, crown's a little tricky because you have to have a very specific wrench to get in and loosen the crown and pull it out. Now, the power button is also somewhat tricky just because it's soldered to the crown flex right here. Fairly easy to replace if you need to and you have some soldering skills, but just know it's soldered right here. All right, now we just need to reconnect this coax cable. It's a little bit of a tricky one to put back, but once you have it aligned and you can push down and feel that click and you know it's in there solid. We'll take our Taptic engine and we'll connect it to its connector. All right, we'll slide this top right corner 
under that flex in little bracket there and then swing it back over the top so we can line up this flex and put back the screws. We'll grab the corner screw here, tighten it down. Same with this one. And once that's tight, we'll do the last one for the Taptic engine, just like that. We'll take the flex cables, and we'll peel back the stickers, revealing the, the flexes. We'll take our display, and I like to take some tweezers like this, so we can slide in the flex cables. And once they both started to go in, then you take the tweezers and gently push on the little arms without slipping off and potentially damaging the connector or the flex. And little by little, wedge in the ZIF connectors. Once they're all the way in, we can fold down the flaps and then put the sticker back over top. Now we'll take our battery, we'll connect it back up, grab our last screw and bracket, and carefully put them back together, screw it down, and we'll take the battery, push it in against that flex, and push it down. We'll get out a charger, and let's plug it in. Got an Apple logo. That's good. Looks like this is really dead. So we'll let this charge up, but as you can see, we pull this away and we put it back and we get the charging symbol. So we'll let this charge up for a little bit, see if we can get it to turn on. Make sure we test everything that we can test. You may not have the passcode to test all of the functions, but given that it's a good unit and it's connected and charging, you can see it's already charged the battery enough to give it enough power to power the display without the charge. So we know that it is charging. So at this point I could go ahead and clean it up, but for the video's sake, I'm gonna let it turn on before we close it up. So we'll come back when it's on. All right, it looks like it's finally turning on. All right, so let's take a look and just make sure that, hold on, let's, if we go like this, we disconnect it, plug back in, it says it's charging and let's just, Make sure that the touch works. We'll go ahead and hold down the power button and we'll go and we'll slide around. And it looks like touch is working perfectly. So we're good to go ahead and seal this back up. The best adhesive that I found for this is cold press adhesive. Both the frame and the border of the display have been cleaned. So it's time to add some adhesive around the perimeter. Nice consistent bead of this cold press all the way around the outside. That way it has its best chance of being water resistant, even though I wouldn't recommend ever swimming with an Apple Watch due to the amount of water damaged Apple Watches that I see and repair. All right, then there's the last section of border there. Now we'll just line up all of the brackets, push it all down. Now in this model, we shouldn't have a lot of squeeze out, but if we do, acetone and a wipe around the perimeter. Just really digging into that edge of the glass there. Now for clamps, the only thing you really need is a rubber band wrapped around several times. Believe me, this is plenty of pressure. And we'll let this cure for at least a half an hour. But otherwise, the back has been replaced. All right, so there we have the watch all finished up and ready to go. I'll be able to take off the rubber bands in a short while, and then that watch will be good to go back on someone's wrist. If there's something you'd like to add to this video, leave it in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for another video.